Okay guys, um, <clears throat> I've been clearing out um, an office at work today and I've found some uh, interesting optical discs so I'm going to show you over a look at these discs and maybe we'll take one apart to see what's inside. So just for reference here we've got um, a uh, fairly standard uh, DVD RW. This is a phase change media compatible with the DVD specifications. It stores 4.7 gigabytes um, or 4.7 billion bytes. Um, so this is a decimal unit as opposed to binary units which uh, some manufacturers have used rather inconsistently in the past. But uh, what is it that we found at work? Well Look at this, this is a verbatim optical disc, so rewritable, 1024 bytes per sector, lifetime warranty, 2 gigabyte, uh, rewritable optical disc, so it comes out in this nice package like this, so I'll slip it out, and as you can see it looks quite, it's quite a substantial sort of device, um, got a little sort of shutter mechanism to keep the... Uh, disc intact and uh, dirty and just slides off and it reveals the actual disc inside and there's a sort of spindle inside as well, sort of mechanical right protect things which obviously interact with something in the drive. So uh, yeah, that, that might be quite interesting, obviously it looks very expensive. But uh, did I find anything else? Well let's uh, have a little look and see what we've got here. What's this? A laser drive media. Made in the UK. Very unusual. So what have we got in this little pizza box? Well we have got... Oh gosh it's too, too big. We've got this um, rather impressive looking device. And of course this is brand new. I've got an entire filing cabinet full of these things at work. but They've all got confidential stuff on. Um, despite the fact that we haven't got a drive that can actually read these things anymore, so I can't take those, but this one uh, came out of an entire box of unused discs, and I think they must have been sitting there for 20 years, um, because the box was dated, had a delivery date on it, I think 1991. Uh, and there's a whole box of, of, of new, new discs in here, so uh, we'll take the padding off, and look at the size of that thing, I mean, look at that. Big, isn't it? But as you can see, it looks pretty, pretty meaty, and uh, you know, obviously, must be incredibly expensive. I don't know how much these things cost. Would not have surprised me in the least if these things were uh, well over a hundred pounds each, uh, twenty years ago. Look at the size of that hub. Um, reminds me of the time I took a uh, floppy disk drive apart. It was an eight-inch floppy disk drive I found in a skip, and um, that thing had um, three hundred watt or one-third horsepower. 240 volt induction motor for the spindle motor. Can you imagine that? A one third horsepower motor for the spindle. So it's, you know, it looks like this sort of thing. Um, so unfortunately, we haven't got the drive. If I had the drive, I would have taken it if I could have lifted it. But I assume it must have gone with the uh, piece of equipment. So we've got some sort of right protect switch mechanism here, obviously detected by the drive. And we've got this shutter mechanism here, which I'm going to have to use the screwdriver to actuate and see if we can actually get to the disc inside um, here. So as you can see there's a disc inside nice and shiny. Well let's uh, start with the uh, small one then. Okay so let's take a closer look at these. So this is the DVD and this is actually what's called a phase change disc. So uh, you have a, 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 set of, a sort of sensitive layer and if you heat it with a laser give it a really sharp high temperature blast and then turn the laser off it it shock cools and it becomes opaque and uh, or if you gently heat it with the laser and then allow it to cool slowly by reducing the laser pulse power slowly it cools clear and there's a little mirror layer behind it and that's how this thing works it's called phase change <coughs> going from opaque to transparent this disc is a bit different. This is uh, what's called a magneto-optical disc, and <clears throat> it works on the basis that uh, the polarization of laser light can be twisted by a magnetic material. So there's a magnetic material on the disc, um, but unlike um, a hard drive, it's a very robust magnetic material, very difficult to magnetize. So the only way 
practical way to magnetise it is you heat it up with a laser, apply the magnetic field, let the release the laser, turn off the laser to let the material cool, and then once it cools, it locks in that magnetic field. So the next time you hit it with a laser, the laser pulse gets twisted. So much more complicated method. It's actually the same method that uh, the, the Sony mini disc used. But uh, that, of course, never really had much success. It's quite expensive because this technique does require quite careful manufacture. And you can actually see the disc inside. It's glass and it's coated with the, whatever the uh, magnetic coating is. And you can actually see, if you look very carefully, you can actually see the sectors uh, marked out with various little sink spots, uh, little places which have been etched by laser at the factory to uh, actually provide physical markers for the data format. So the disc comes pre-formatted. And it's reversible, so it's got two sides, A and a B, so you can flip the disc over and it's got one gigabyte on each side, um, or about one million sectors on each side. And uh, rather conveniently, it's got all these screws here, so what we'll do, we'll just take it apart and get the disc out. Okay, so we've removed all the screws, and there are a couple of screws on here, so hopefully this will just pull off. And then the drive, the, the disc sort of caddy should just come apart. Here we go. And uh, here we have a little interesting sort of spring mechanism. Yeah, not, not particularly complicated, just used to make what break the shutter. Let's see if we can get the disc out. So it's on a little metal hub. Like that, and it's glass. Yeah, I think it's glass. Feels like glass, but uh, it's quite thick. It looks actually like two separate pieces of glass bonded together. I'll just see if we can actually try and show you that. There, so it actually looks bonded. So the individual layers are, I think, individual discs, and it's just simply been bonded to two discs bonded together. Um, in fact, you can actually see the serial numbers for the individual discs, disc platters there. Let's see if we can just focus that up. There, so we've got one layer here, um, 04E7, and on the back, um, 04EA79, I don't know. So presumably same sort of batch. And this is rather interesting, because if you look at the markings on the sectors here, you can see they're straight, but obviously they work on a constant linear distance because as you rotate around the disc, you see they actually spiral in in this rather nice sort of shape. So straight here, sort of going out, sort of rather quite violently swept and then becoming straight and interleaved. Rather interesting. But, uh, so there we go. Um, very complex, very precise, precision-made device, but uh, regrettably now completely obsolete and, of course, very, very expensive at the time. You can still buy replacement discs for, for these drives, and they're about 30 to £40 pounds each, so very expensive. Well, here's the big one. Let's see if we can try and get into it. Now, this thing doesn't have any screws on it, so I think we're just going to have to go for it with the screwdriver and see if it, how it comes apart, if it comes apart. Otherwise, we might have to uh, get Mr. Hammer. Uh, to help out, which will be a shame, but I've got a whole box of these, so I'm not that bothered. Um, well, this is going to be a bit more of a challenge than I thought. Right, okay guys, now this is interesting, I hadn't realised this. These little mechanisms here, I thought was some clever mechanism of actually getting the disc to fit into the drive, but actually, what they do is, when, when we is they actually allow the drive casing, the disc casing, to actually open up. So there's the compact form, and then when you put it in the drive, obviously what's meant to happen is the drive operates this mechanism, and the case opens up, allowing the disc to spin freely without contacting the axle sides of the case. How clever is that? Um, it doesn't help me open it up, but there we go. I thought that was, I thought that was quite interesting. Okay, so here it is. The uh, case has been opened, and there's the disc on its big hub. It'd be a shame to sort of try and get fingerprints on this, but uh, we'll pull it out anyway. Okay, here we go.
So here we have the disc. So we've got this plastic and metal hub and then we've got the main disc which looks like some form of glass uh, and uh, it's got a little metal outer rim here with some sort of al it's just sort of aluminium really. So this is very expensive and this is really heavy as well. And as you can see it's reversible as well so there's recording surfaces on each side but uh, I can't actually tell whether it's two discs or not. There's no sort of identifying markings anywhere on the disc like there was on the uh, smaller one. Um, you may just about be able to see the uh, hard written sort of sector information on here. Let's see if we can get a, a decent focus on that. I'm not sure we're going to be able to see it actually. Hmm. But the uh, unlike on the other one where the, the where the sectors were sort the sort of mar hard written sectors were marked in a constant linear distance, these are actually marked in constant angles, so they're completely radial all the way around. Um, which is interesting. So obviously not as efficient in the use of data storage as the other one. Uh, and you know the space is wasted towards the edge of the edge of the disk where a greater area of disk is used uh, for the same amount of data. The other thing that's sort of quite interesting was considering that this thing has literally never been out of its packaging until I've just started touching it now and I've only been playing with it for a couple of seconds really, a couple of minutes is it's full of crap. I mean there's dust and hair and all sorts of junk in there, you know, there's a big fat lump of dust just there. And you can, you can, I'm sure you can see that on the, on, on, even on YouTube video quality. And there's loads of these things everywhere, dust bunnies, absolutely everywhere, it's absolutely filthy. So uh, presumably not made in the clean room and uh, despite all the shutter mechanisms it just didn't really keep it very clean. As to how much data these things store, well, I don't know. I think this particular model is about uh, one gigabyte, but it doesn't actually say anywhere on it, and you know the drive is long gone. So, and uh, no one at work knows, even the people that used to use these uh, many years ago. So, uh, a bit of a mystery. Um, no doubt, like the uh, the other optical discs we showed, there are lots of different models, but I think this is the original model um, because, the, like I said, these were manufactured in 1991. And I think they're probably 1 gigabyte or 1.2 gigabytes or something. So there we go. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, a little quick tour through some of the uh, uh, previous memory technologies. And well, I might as well just show you a modern uh, data store today. There we go. Micro SD card, 32 gigabytes. Bought that just for a bargain. Um, I, I believe you can get 64 gigabyte versions of these as well. So there we go. We've come quite a long way in 20 years. Have a good Christmas.